Good morning. Good morning to this Friday, which marks the second, the second, the end of the second week of prayer and fasting. Well, actually, tomorrow marks it, so don't get too excited. But tomorrow is two weeks of prayer and fasting, which is going to be for three weeks, so we're two thirds of the way done. And uh, excited to be together. It's uh, we passed the. Uh, the most difficult parts of a fast. And uh, today we're going to read from chapter 9 in the Lord's Prayer. For those, all those who are watching online, and I'm not looking at uh, Facebook Live right now, but I hope my parents are watching. I hope you are. Because uh, I'm wearing a shirt that you would be very proud of and simply says, Phillies, Flyers, Eagles, Sixers. And I was just telling them that as I grew up, um, you, as a South Jersey boy, you didn't have a choice of who you're going to root for. And some of my fondest memories were uh, me and my dad on a Sunday afternoon, just uh, me laying on the floor and watching um, Eagles games, and um, then both of us falling asleep and waking up later to find out what the score was. Um, but... Uh, but that's just how it was, so that's kind of my, my, my good friend Sam Eckhart got me this shirt because he knows what it feels like to be a Philly fan. <laughs> but uh, good to have you with us. We are going to um, jump to page 82 in the books, and, uh, but before we do that, we're going to start off in prayer and just, <clears throat> and just welcome the presence of the Lord with us. And so... Lord, we just give you this time. Lord, we start off our morning saying this morning is, is your morning. And Lord, we don't want to lead. We want to follow. So we want to follow you and where you lead us. And God, we trust you. With all the craziness on, going on in the world, Lord, we trust you. And we'll follow you wherever you lead. So Lord... We ask for you to speak to our hearts. We ask for you to speak to our lives this morning. And Lord, over each and every one of these prayer requests that are laying here on the stage, Lord, we just declare your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In each and every one, in each and every one of these lives, Lord, they represent, and each and every one of these cards that represent a need. And you are the one who can meet that need. So Lord, we trust in you and your ability to meet that need. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so David, he said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Dr. Rutland says, Sheep are so nervous and timid, they will hardly lie down unless the shepherd is visible and on guard. They will not drink from live water. I never knew that till I read this. It says, um, evidently, flowing rivers and rapid brooks are terrifying to sheep. Sheep will only drink from standing water, such as a pool or a pond. Some have claimed that this is because of their thick wool, and that if they fell in, that the water would saturate their wool, and they would become heavy, and uh, it'd be a heavy overcoat. Um, sheep need a shepherd sympathetic to their fears and sympathetic to their insecurities, one who will guide them to still waters. 
We do not, in uh, Hebrews 4.15, it says, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. So some years ago, I did prison ministry in a federal penitentiary in Atlanta, Georgia. During that time, I became friends with a man named Eugene, who had killed two people in a bank robbery. In prison, he became a Christian and was part of a group I worked with. Our friendship was um, was a blessing to me in many ways. He was the most harmless-looking chap in his mid-50s, a bit paunchy and graying fast. I could hardly imagine that he had ever been capable of a heinous crime. I'm a lifer, he once said to me, without parole. Can you imagine what that feels like? His, his tone was not argumentative, but straightforward and inquisitive, like a reporter at a press conference. No, I don't think I can, I said. I've never been in prison except to do ministry. I always get out when the service is over. I cannot really understand what you're experiencing. And I won't insult you by saying that I do. He studied my, my face for a few seconds before he spoke. This time, his tone was more uh, a sad resignation. Well, at least I appreciate your honesty. Nobody knows what this is like. Nobody. Somebody does. Jesus does. And that's not just preacher talk. Look at his life story. He spent the first night of his life with his unmarried mother in a rented garage and his last night all alone on death row. I never thought about it like that. Well, do think about it. He asked his father, God, to let him out of the execution and allow him to go free, but the answer from heaven was silence. Ever had that experience? Yes, I have, he said. Often, but I'm really surprised that Jesus did. I'm a Christian. I know he died for me. I think about the cross sometimes. That was much worse than any needle in the arm. Yes, it was worse. Did he have to do it? He didn't have to do it. That's what made it so wonderful. He had a choice. He pleaded with God to be excused from the torture and more importantly, from the horror of crucifixion. Jesus knew that was God's will for him, but he did not have to do it. He chose God's will and not his own. Are you, the man said, are you saying Jesus was free to choose? Yes. And he struggled with it until his sweat drops, until he sweated drops of blood. But in the end, he chose God's will. Nobody took his life from him. He laid it down. We have to do the same thing. If prison is God's will for you right now and you choose it, then you are free because you choose, not the courts. In other words, if I do what Jesus did, if I lay my life down, no one can take it from me. That's how it works. Choosing God's will is the only way anyone gets free. Your will is to be free from prison, but God's, God has revealed to you in no uncertain terms that for right now, prison is his will for you. Maybe for the rest of your life. I don't want to die in here, he said. Of course not. Who would? But if you choose his will and not yours, you are free. You're just free in prison, not free from prison. We talked along these lines almost the entire time I saw him. And we exchanged quite a few letters on the topic of God's will. Most of them centered on the Lord's prayer, and one of them is very precious to me. This is his letter to Dr. Rutland. Dear Doc, I've been praying the Lord's prayer just like I promised you. I remember when you said Jesus knew how I felt. What you didn't tell me was that the, most, that the more I prayed, the more I would know how he felt. I see now... I see now you were right that the key verse is thy will be done. 
But do you see that it's not just his will, but the kingdom? I prayed that prayer a thousand times, and now I see myself as not so much in prison as in his kingdom because I'm in his will. I may never live another day on the outside, but I am not in prison. I am in his kingdom. If I am, if, if I am to go from this steel and concrete hell straight into heaven, it will be because it was his will, not mine, and not the Department of Justice. You admitted you don't know how this all feels to me. You also told me that Jesus does. When it's crazy in here, which is almost all the time, he leads me beside still waters because he knows how I feel. Your friend, Eugene. Pretty powerful. So as we pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have a new understanding. And... Uh, and the title of this chapter says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. Let's just commit to God's will and allow him to lead. Maybe you don't like what his will looks like to you, but it's an awesome thing to embrace his will and to say, not my will, Lord, not my will, your will and thrive in his will and what he has planned for you. So right before we go into praying over these cards and focusing on him, we're going to be led into it once again with the Lord's Prayer. And if you all would join me, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we're going to also pray through Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, this morning we commit it to you, and Lord, I ask as we pray and, and speak your promises and speak your blessing over these requests that lie before us, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. Fill us with your presence. But Lord, lead us into an understanding of your will and embracing your will and your plan for our lives. So Lord, we call on you to break every curse in the name of Jesus and to pour out your blessing. And so Lord, where there's sickness and illness and disease, we reject that in the name of Jesus. We pray healing and health and wellness and your goodness over each and every one of these. And Lord, we pray victory and we pray hope. And more importantly, we pray that, Lord, your will would be done and that we would embrace your will. This time is yours, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We will come back together at 10 minutes before the hour. And I just encourage you right now to, to just uh, spend some time with the Lord and uh, then also to pray for the requests that are before us.
This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me.
Seeking for the sake of all mankind, salvation is in his blood. Seeking for the sake of all mankind, salvation is in his blood. Jesus, Messiah, the righteous died.
Speaking truth when I can't find it Until the work on earth is done Watch as the clouds hear our swing low Lift up the sound as he makes our praises true
starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. Soon, God, all we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you.
All right, it is 10 before the hour, and uh, as we close out in prayer, I would ask <clears throat> that each of you would just grab at least one card and hold that with you. It doesn't matter what card it is, hold one of the cards um, as we close out in prayer. And that's representative of all the cards that are here. We're going to pray God's will to be done and healing and breakthrough. But um, as we close out, we're going to pray over all of these cards. And just want to remind you the power that we have in prayer and, and what we're doing here. And um, this was from the beginning of the fast. Gina had put down this prayer request of her friend, Jennifer, and she's in remission from cancer, and it says her recent scan shows a possible something on her thyroid, and as you all know, that that can cause a lot of fear, and we tend to hear those kind of reports, and when you hear something, you tend to, your mind tends to go to the big, you know, terrible things, and so this week, as we've prayed over this card, um, for these two weeks, um, her friend Jennifer got a good report yesterday. Uh, what was the exact words that she said? Nothing there. There's nothing there. So, Amen. So that is our God who who stepped in and and healed. And that's her name was Jennifer. And so that's a praise report. And that is a uh, that's powerful. Um, and so as you hold that card in your hand, we're going to pray over all the cards. And, um, I, I love seeing young people when they're putting their prayer requests down uh, on the cards. And so as, as I'm walking through here and I pick up a card and I've, I've seen my daughter's name on it. Isabel had, had written a prayer request and I'm like, I'm like, that's what you got. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Hey, I'm like, Isabel's. And so it's like, wow, I'm like, I'm going to really pray over this one. And uh, not that the other ones aren't important, but I'm praying over that one. And, and I know her needs and I know her weaknesses and I know her, you know. And so uh, I just, when I thought of that, I thought of God's desire for each and every one of his children. That they would learn to discover how to thrive in their walk with him and find healing and victory in him. And God's love for her is so much greater than even a father's love for her, a natural father's love. And uh, think of God's love <clears throat> and the request that you have in front of you, God's heart for that person, that God's heart for meeting the need and delivering them and for his blessing. And so hold up the card that you have. And Lord, these cards simply represent a need, a, a, a request um, something to desire from you. And so, Lord, over each and every one of these cards here, Lord, this is the body of Christ. Lord, these are, these are those that you love. These are people that you desire nothing more than the best for each and every one of them. And so, Lord, I pray breakthrough in the name of Jesus over each and every one of those cards. Lord, I pray healing over each and every one of these cards in the name, we reject sickness, we reject illness, we reject disease, we, we curse cancer in the name of Jesus. And Lord, in place of cancer, for every person who has been diagnosed with that, we speak blessing in the name of Jesus and healing and deliverance, deliverance over each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, for those struggling with sickness and illness, we pray healing and health. Lord, we pray your favor over each and every one of these requests in the name of Jesus. I pray that each person on that would discover a, a new intimacy with you, a new walk with you, a new a level of, of hearing your voice and, and understanding your will 
And so, Lord, pour out your spirit on each and every one of the lives represented on these cards, Lord. May we not settle for an average walk, Lord. May we not settle for not hearing from you. But, Lord, may each and every one of them press in to more of you. Press in to to spend time alone with you, God. And, Lord, that they would experience their own personal revival, healing, salvation, deliverance. Lord, may they become overcomers of anything that's held them down, Lord, and through it discover your love for them, your plan for them, your power in their life. Lord, bless, bless, pour out your blessing, God, in a very real way. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to intercede and to pray for each and every one of these. And then as we close out, I'm going to revert back to Psalm 91 today, and I'm just going to I love this scripture, and I believe it's a good one to pray over each and every one of these requests. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and he, and from Uh, the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, um, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone." You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. God bless you. May you experience him today in a very real way. Have a great rest of the day and hope to see you on Sunday.